Welcome. In this short video, we're going to do some examples for present value, future value, and the implied interest rate. So to start us off, let's recall that present and future value come from the time value of money. They come from a very basic intuitive idea that $100 today is not worth the same as $100 tomorrow or even in one year. We're not indifferent between those two things. No one here would choose to wait a year for $100 if they could have the exact same amount of money today. Why? Well, money earns interest over time, but also we prefer consuming today. We're relatively impatient. We value consumption today more than we would value the same amount of consumption in the future. And that's what gives us a time value of money. So let's begin um, with a future value example. An example one here, let's think about $100 today, an interest rate of 5% annually, and a period of one year. And at the end of one year, at 5% annually, $100 plus the interest earned on the $100, of course, will give us $105. Very simple. And if we go forward at the end of two years, well, that $105 gets subject to 5% again in the second year, and we get a total of a little over $110. So in other words, in general, for $100 in n years with an annual interest rate of i, we have this simple formula to calculate the future value. With future value, we compound cash flows today to the future. So compounding is another way to talk about calculating the future value. If we kept compounding this $100 at 5% year after year, this is what we would get. Right. Year after year, 5% is added to a higher and higher amount, so as you can see, the future value increases at an exponential rate, the longer that $100 is applied to 5% annually. And in fact, in a spreadsheet, future value calculations are really quite simple. Let's jump out to a spreadsheet here. And in jumping out to the spreadsheet, for example 1, Let's say uh, we're calculating future value, so we go to financial functions and we find the future value schedule. Our rate is 5%. The number of periods, um, for example, for two years. There are no payments in between those two years. And we begin with $100. And of course the calculation comes out to what we had earlier in the slide, $110.25. So, back to our example, future value, compounding into the time, into the future. Now, let's go backwards and think about the concept of present value. So, present value says, if I get an amount of money in the future, what's the equivalent value today in the present? What's the present value today of a future cash flow? In general, if I'm going to get $100 n years from now, its value today, its present value, is given by the following formula. Right? The $100 discounted by the interest rate over n years. So now let's take that and apply it to an example. So for example, $100 in three years at an interest rate of 5%, what is the present value? We can use the formula on the previous slide we have $100, we plug in our 5%, we plug in our three years, and we would calculate that to get a um, little over $86. Again, we can easily do this on a spreadsheet as well using a present value formula. So I'm going to jump out to the spreadsheet here for example two. So I choose a financial function called PV for present value. Again, the rate here number of periods was three years, no payments in between, $100 in the future. And what do I get? I get the $86.38. So if I have to wait for money, it's worth a little bit less today because in general, we don't like to wait for our cash flows.
Let's think of a third example for present value. Um, this one more of an application. So suppose you have a rich uncle. Don't, don't we all wish we had a rich uncle? But suppose you have a rich uncle and your rich uncle promises you $5,000 in two years. You do well in school, $5,000 in cash to you at the end of two years. Now let's suppose interest rates are relatively high at 10%. The question is, well, what is the equivalent value today? So you have to wait $5,000 for two years, which means today that's worth a little less because you're waiting for it. So we're really, again, in the present value, we're solving the present value equation. This time, the future cash flow is $5,000. The interest rate is 10%. We're waiting two years. And so what's it worth today? Well, a little over $4,000. Again, let's step out in Excel and see how I get this number. Here in example three, we're going to pick present value. We have a rate of 10%, two years, no payments in between, and a future value of 5,000. Okay, and that's what we get, $4,132 and 23 cents is the present value of that amount. With present value, we discount future cash flows, right? With future value, we're compounding money today into what it would be worth in the future. But with present value, we have a future cash flow and we're discounting it to equivalent amount today, which is why I, that interest rate, is often referred to as a discount rate. And that discount rate implies that payments we wait for are worth less. Because I have to wait two years for the $5,000, it's not worth $5,000 today. It's worth something less. How much less is going to depend on how long I'm waiting for it and what the going interest rate is going to be. Final example here, suppose um, in our third case we're given the present value and the future value and we want to calculate the interest rate. Again, given the equations that we've dealt with, we can easily do that. So consider a hypothetical investment. It starts with a deposit of $1,000. So you pay $1,000 to get into this investment, and at the end of five years, you have $1,400. That implies an annual interest rate during that time period. So let's calculate what that interest rate would have to be. First of all, what isn't it? It's not 40%. Right? 1,000 to 1,400 is a 40% increase over five years. We're looking for an annual interest rate, so that's not it. Do we just divide that by five? Absolutely not. Why? Because that initial $1,000 is compounding annually at the interest rate over five years. Just dividing by five doesn't take that compounding into effect, so this is incorrect. The correct answer solves the following equation. Right? $1,000 today turns into $1,400 based on this discount rate. What is the interest rate? How long? And that'll tell us the annual interest rate for this compounding. Again, we can use Excel and we'll use the rate function to answer this question. So here in example four, we're actually trying to find an interest rate, so we use the function called rate. Number of periods? Five years. Any payments in between? No. No payments in between. Just initially we paid in $1,000, and at the end we receive $1,400. What interest rate does that imply? Just under 7.7%, so 6.96%. So you can see that's significantly below 8% because the $1,000 is compounding annually. So you don't need an 8% rate to get a total increase of 40%. You need just under 7%. So if we're looking at the time value of money, interest rates tend to be measured annually, and we have to take compounding or discounting into account when we compare cash flows that are received in different periods of time.